Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm so excited. We have Terry Walls back again for another episode. She is such a popular guest. Everyone loves her, and if you haven't listened to her previous episodes, I'd love for you to go back and download those. But Terry, welcome back. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Well, we are going to dive deep today, and just for those people, give a brief introduction of yourself. I'd love for you guys to listen to the other ones. But tell us a little bit about what got you so passionate about the health space and what kind of got you to where you are today. And what we can do. So I'm an internal medicine physician. You know, I'm in practice doing well. Uh, I developed weakness in my left leg in 2000. I um, ultimately see the neurologist. uh, And he says, you know, Terry, this could be bad or really, really bad. And so for the next three weeks, I begin going through a, a whole bunch of tests and uh, you know, I'm thinking about the fact that I know I've already had 20 years of worsening electrical face pain across, uh, that's trigeminal neuralgia. So uh, it's like, okay, I have a progressive disease. I don't want to get disabled. So actually, I'm praying secretly for a rapidly fatal diagnosis. But three weeks later, I hear I have relapsing remaining multiple sclerosis. I do my research. I find the best multiple sclerosis center in the country. I see their best physician. I take the newest drugs. Three years later, I hear tilt, recline, wheelchair. I, and, you know, again, I, I, I take metazantral in a form of chemotherapy. It does not help. I take Tizabri, the, the new biologic drug. It does not help. Uh, I've switched to uh, Celsept. I have adopted the paleo diet. I, and I, I, that's when I'm asking myself, am I doing all that I can? You know, my son is 11. My daughter is 8. I go back to reading PubMed and start reading the basic science about the animal models of um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, MS. And I decide that mitochondrial dysfunction is what drives disability. And I create a supplement cocktail for my mitochondria. The speed of my decline slows. I'm, I'm super grateful. I discover a study using electrical stimulation of muscles and people who are paralyzed. Um, I go uh, meet with my physical therapist. We discuss. Uh, he says, yes, he uses it for athletes. And he's, I-, I can grow bigger muscles for you, Terry, but I don't know that your brain can talk to those bigger muscles. I might be making it harder for you to walk. But he gives me a test session. It hurts like hell, by the way. <laughs> but when it's over, I feel great. It's doing something really wonderful for my mood. Uh, and so we add uh, the electrical stimulation. I have these little tiny workouts that I could do. You know, just a little 10-minute uh, workout. If I do more than that, I can't function and go to work. I'm in uh, a zero gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose. That's how I staff patients in the resident clinics. That's how I'm with my family. I take my meals at home. Uh, I discover at that time an organization called the Institute for Functional Medicine. They have a course in neuroprotection. I I buy that course uh, and I take that. I now have a longer list of supplements. Uh, and I've been doing, you know, the paleo diet already for five years. Uh, and then I had this big aha in Chantel. I laugh at myself now, like how long it took to have this aha. What if I redesign my paleo diet based on this long list of supplements I'm taking? You know, look for where those things are in the food supply. So that's a few more months of research. I start this new research, December tw- uh, this new way, this highly structured paleo diet, December 26, 2007. Now, at that point, I'm beginning to have brain fog. I um, I can take a few steps with walking sticks. Um, I cannot sit up anymore in a regular chair like this. I'm in a zero gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose. My um, It's clear to me I'm on track to become bedridden by my illness, probably demented by my illness, and probably uh, have the trigeminal neuralgia uh, turn on uh, permanently and die with really horrific intractable pain. Terribly grim future. And I'm doing all this stuff to slow my decline because I know with secondary progressive MS, there's no recovery that's possible. Mm-hmm. I start this structured way of eating. I, then January comes. I go to my new assignment at the VA, uh, which is the traumatic brain injury clinic. The first two weeks, I just watch my partners for my you know, total recline wheelchair. And then the third week, I have to start examining these patients. No residents, 
uh, and I come home on Monday and I tell my wife, Jackie, like, you know, it's really not that bad. I, I it, it seems to be okay. And by the way, honey, could I sit in a regular chair for supper? So I sit in a regular chair for supper, first time in years, and I, and I take my meal. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the week on Friday, I come back and I tell Jackie, you know, I think I can do this. Mm. And well, I go to see my physical therapist. They said, yeah, sure, you're definitely stronger. Let's have you do 10 minutes twice a day. And that's 15 minutes twice a day, then 20 minutes twice a day, then 30 minutes twice a day. And then I start walking in the hallway with walking stuff. You know, studying my colleagues. I And then, you know, uh, two weeks later with just one walking stick and then with none. I, and then in May, on Mother's Day, so we're, you know, five months into this new way of eating, I want to try riding my bike, which I've not done in six years. We have an emergency family meeting. Uh, Jackie tells my six foot five, 16 year old son, Zach, you run alongside on the left. And she tells my 13 year old daughter, Zebby, you run alongside on the right. And she'll follow. And I, I bike around the block. You know, that big 16 year old boy, he's crying. The 13 year old girl, she's crying. Uh, Jackie's crying. And where I relive that moment, you know, tears still come to my eyes because that's when I'm like, well, how much recovery might be possible? And, you know, I began biking a little bit further um, uh, every day. And then in October, Jackie signs me up for the Courage Ride, which is 18.5 miles. And, you know, when I cross the finish line, we're all crying again. Uh, and, you know, this really transforms the way I think about disease and health, it will transform the way I practice medicine. It will transform the research that I do. And I've made it my mission to teach other clinicians how to uh, do what I do and the public that, yes, there is so much that we can do to uh, better manage our symptoms, improve our quality of life, whatever severe chronic disease uh, problem that you are facing. Did you guys know that your thyroid's main food is iodine? And guess what? Mercury and other toxins gobble up your selenium and your thyroid glands need selenium to convert iodine to thyroxine. So if you have mercury fillings and with all the toxins and mold, your selenium just, just gets gobbled up. So here's the bottom line. I take something called peak thyroid. It's got iodine, it's got copper, and it's got selenium. Everything you need to get your thyroid back to functioning without medicine. So go to ChantelRayWay.com slash upgraded formulas. Use the coupon code ChantelRay to get a huge discount. Well, one of the things that, you know, the WALS protocol, even if you don't have MS, and like you said, your diet has helped you go from being in a wheelchair to biking miles at a time. And I will say this, you know, for me, I struggle with a lot of joint pain. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll just quickly kind of share what I, I remember the walls protocol to be, and you correct me, but basically it's lots of meat and fish, vegetables that are green and leafy and, um, you know, fruit, but, um, avoiding things like dairy, eggs, grains, nightshades, like tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, peppers, getting rid of sugar, and then obviously no grains, like no wheat, no rice, no oatmeal, and getting rid of dairy products and eggs. Is that you? Know, so that pretty what well, I've done is I've created a, a stepwise program. Uh, and so people with autoimmunity will go into much more detail what I do, particularly for people with uh, joint issues or inflammatory bowel disease, they need a, a more rigorous program. But the general public has such a terrible diet, they need an e they often need an easier starting point. So level one uh, is gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, lots of vegetables. You know, we talk about uh, leafy greens, uh, cabbage family, onion family, mushroom family, and deeply pigmented uh, vegetables and fruit. Uh, and if you're a vegetarian for um, spiritual beliefs, you can do that with beans and rice in a 
pressure cooker. Um, uh, preferably, you'll eat meat, but I realize some people are, are committed vegetarians. Then we go to level two. That's much more paleolithic. Uh, uh, no grains, uh, um, or really dramatically fewer gluten-free grains, uh, and uh, uh, less fewer legumes, more fermented foods, uh, more organ meat. Uh, then I have a ketogenic version, and then I have um, the elimination diet, which takes out nightshades, takes out nuts and seeds, uh, takes out uh, all grains and legumes, uh, and. When I see somebody with a autoimmune disease involving their joints or a autoimmune disease involving the lining of the gut, I, I tell them you'll you'll need likely an elimination diet to really feel well. And depending on which, how many years of suffering they've had, they're like, oh, that's too hard. I can't do it. Or they're like, okay, you know, I'm in enough pain. Yes, I am ready to do that. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we can use a food sensitivity testing to further uh, understand their sensitivity issues. In in my VA practice uh, for, for years, I didn't have any access to the advanced functional medicine testing. What I did was we did the elimination diet. We took everything out and then let people bring ingredients back one at a time. Uh, and we used uh, pressure cookers. And we had extraordinary results. Yes, if we'd been able to do functional medicine testing, we might have been able to have extraordinary results a little sooner. Uh, we might have been able to address some of uh, our failures a little more effectively. Yeah. What, what I would say is, so for a long time, I have been on a paleo diet and I've done that for a very long time. And then I would kind of, you know, I get to a snapping point and I'd be like, I'm going to have a piece of gluten-free toast or, you know, I'd sprinkle a few things in. But what I have noticed about your protocol that is so genius is that when I have, if I decide to have nightshade vegetables, which I, I want you to kind of talk about the P Walls protocol versus the paleo diet, what the difference yeah, yeah, are. Yeah. Um, because I know for me, when I do eat nightshade vegetables like tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, and peppers, um, which are allowed, well, sweet potatoes are allowed on the paleo diet, but some of those others are allowed on the paleo diet, I would still get a lot of joint pain. So, and, and eggs are also allowed on the, Correct. the paleo diet as well. But again, so, again, yeah. let's, let's talk about the paleo diet. What, what we're trying to do is to go back to a, a eating pattern that humans ate for, you know, millions of years. You know, we were primates eating mostly leaves, a few small uh, insects and animals in gradually our ancestors were eating more and more meat, fish, uh, shellfish. Uh, 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 we'd break the long bones uh, uh, and eat out uh, the marrow and uh, break the skulls and eat, eat out the brain. And we loved eating the eyes because uh, the eyes are such a great source of uh, omega-3 fats. And then, you know, um, humans migrate across the globe. We encounter new foodstuffs, new ecosystems. And we, so the truth is, yes, we can eat a wide variety of foods uh, and, and thrive. Then we invented agriculture it, really very recently, eight to 10,000 years. Uh, and then we added uh, grains, uh, uh, legumes, uh, more nightshades. And, you know, our health, we still had reproductive success. We still did fairly well. Uh, and then we had the Industrial Revolution. Uh, that's really quite recent, 300 years. Now we have white sugar, white flour, uh, uh, processed foods, emulsifiers. And we, uh, 75 years ago, really invent fast food, more, many, many more packaged products. So we keep changing our, what we eat into more and more food-like chemicals. And that leads to, of course, many, many different our albums. The paleo diet said, you know what, let's go back 
in principle to the kinds of things we we're eating before uh, farming came along. So that's meat, fish, eggs, animal products, uh, plant products, taking out grains, legumes. Some paleo eaters still eat dairy, some uh, exclude dairy. Uh, that, in general, is much more nutrient dense than the standard American diet. And so for many people, just going on a paleo diet improves the quality of their nutrition and their, their symptoms reduce. They have less pain, better moods, uh, yeah, better blood pressure, better blood sugar. However, if you're having an abnormal immune response to some of the food proteins, your autoimmune processes will still be going on. Uh, and when you're eating a food uh, that you have an abnormal immune response to, you can trigger activation of the innate immune system, opening up of the um, uh, channels of the small intestine. These food proteins get into your bloodstream. It jacks up your immune system. That will jack up your pain levels. It will uh, increase the brain clog. It'll increase irritability, anxiety, uh, depression. It can increase rage. Uh, and that leads to uh, bigger health problems, which over time ha has led to people in the paleo world talking about uh, the autoimmune, their autoimmune uh, intervention protocol, which basically is a, a big elimination diet. Uh, I've created another uh, version of the elimination diet. Uh, and then, of course, clinically, uh, if I can investigate for food sensitivities, that I can personalize the recommendations uh, a bit more. Guys, I just want to interrupt for just a second, and I want you to hear Paul Saladino talk about why liver is so important. And if you don't like liver, we have another option for you. Your ancestors were eating liver. And the reason that this sort of wisdom has been passed down is because liver is very nutritious. It's basically nature's multivitamin. If you look at the nutrients in meat, they're great. You've got zinc, you got B6, you got B12, you got some K2. But if you look at liver, it really complements what's in muscle meat. And there are many unique nutrients found in organs, specifically liver as a powerhouse of these, that are difficult to obtain outside of liver. Like meat and organs are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. They're supposed to be eaten together. The easiest way to eat liver is just to do it raw. If you don't want to eat liver raw, you can cook it. But the reason that I like to do it raw is because there are unique nutrients in liver that are probably somewhat degraded when you cook the liver. This really is like the most nutrient rich supplements that you can find. And they are amazing. I have tried them. I absolutely love them. So just go to heartandsoil.co, use the coupon code Chantal Ray and save you some money there. So let's talk about besides the wall style diet or, you know, whatever someone eliminates out of their diet. Let's talk about some other things that you did. Was there any, you know, were you doing like cryotherapy or massage therapy or electrical so, stimulation or those kind of things that helped you? So uh, back in 2007, 2008, uh, the summer of 2007, you know, I went back to daily meditation. Uh, I I was doing, it's sort of interesting, you know, I was an athlete before I entered medical school. I did uh, full contact taekwondo, uh, uh, free sparring. Uh, and so I had understood that it's super important to maintain physical activity and exercise. So I uh, was still exercising, even though I kept getting you know, smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, when I added the electrical stimulation muscles, and I would use my device to as much pain as I could tolerate. You know, sweat would be pouring off me because I, you know, I I was doing everything that I could because I was on the edge of a really terrible things happening uh, and I had no hope for recovery. I just wanted to slow my decline. So I was doing my electrical stimulation uh, and I was gradually increasing the amount of time, the amount of hours uh, that I was doing that and gradually able to increase uh, the exercise, which I tolerated better when I was adding electrical stimulation. I uh, was aware of cryotherapy. There wasn't any cryotherapy here uh, in our city, so, and you know, I have a farm kit. We know how to improvise with, you know, based on what you've got. So I started doing ice baths and I quit heating my pool. So I also have a pool that I swim in. 
So I turned off the heater. So that's water's getting colder and colder and colder. And I have, when I uh, take a bath in the evening, I fill it up with ice. Uh, and so I'm doing it uh, at ice bath. I swim. Uh, I'd also, yeah, this probably uh, in April, because I'm feeling really remarkably better. And I wonder, like, I wonder if I could do sauna again. So I, I fi find a local gym. I go in there, sauna, to 160 degrees. I'm sitting there, uh, and yeah, I'm reading because, you know, I, I have optic neuritis. I, and it's like, okay, this, uh, previously, if I got hot, I couldn't see very well. So I'm in this 160-degree sauna for 40 minutes. I'm reading the whole time, and I'm like, I think I can do saunas again. So on the way home, I go get myself a sauna, and I start doing saunas uh, every day. Now, I've since switched from the far infrared to a near-infrared bulb, uh, so I get red light plus uh, the sauna, uh, and that's part of my daily regimen. That's awesome. Talk a little bit more about the electrical therapy that you did. So like, you know, I know that if you go in the electrical stimulation, I know that if you go to the chiropractor, a lot of the chiropractors have an electrical stimulation machine there that they have, but are there kind of talk about the cost of them and how you yeah. could get them at home for a reasonable price and where did you put it on and why did it, would this So, help? um, my physical therapist, you know, taught, uh, said in order to help walking, he wanted me to uh, stimulate my belly, my back, and my glutes. And then he said, you know, Terry, you're pretty weak everywhere. So it's 45 minutes a day to that muscle group while you are contracting the muscle, and an isometric contraction would be fine. Uh, 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off, to as much pain as you can tolerate. And, you know, as you do this, you you uh, secrete more substance P, more endorphins, and so you can so keep increasing the current. So it's as intense as you can tolerate. Uh, and so over time, I was like, okay, I'm still working. I'm not going to stop working to do this. So I'm going to take my advice with me to work, hook myself up. And when I was with patients, I could it couldn't be as intense because I couldn't be going mm -hmm. with a patient. I had to, be able to talk and and behave normally. So that was less intense. Uh, at home, uh, when I wasn't with patients, you know, I really jacked it up uh, as intense as I could. Uh, and we had a portable device uh, that was a prescription device. Uh, so that uh, has more potency than the over-the-counter device. And where to locate the electrodes, um, uh, you need a physical therapist to help you design, which, you know, identify which muscles are weak, uh, which exercises you should do, and where to place the electrodes. Uh, uh, and my advice for the um, listeners is look for a physical therapist that has an athletic practice because the athletes uh, often use electrical stimulation to recover from injuries more quickly. Um, now, I also use uh, a device that is uh, much more pricey, uh, that has direct current, uh, called the Newbie. Uh, and there are physical therapy practices that have the newbie uh, and a lot of experience using this technology to recover athletes and to uh, and they've now moved in the clinical space to help patients with a neuromuscular disease, you know, multiple sclerosis, and other autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, um, now, at the time that I started doing ESTEM. There was not as much uh, information about what's happening in the brain, you know, uh, mechanistically, why ESTEM is so powerful. We've uh, since observed that when you exercise, we make a lot of nerve growth factors in the brain, and of course locally, uh, to grow the muscles and to help the brain uh, nourish and repair itself. If you have electrical stimulation at the same time as uh, you're doing the exercise. So I have the current, I'm contracting my muscles, the current is contracting my muscles. 
that leads to many more muscles getting contracted, you know, muscle fibers. And it leads to many more nerve growth factors in the brain. Mm. It's very clear to me. And I, my brain still really loves electrical stimulation. I, 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 I do e-stim on average an hour a day now. Uh, and I'll, I also, you know, this morning, uh, as part of my routine, you know, I, I got up, I meditated, I jogged on my treadmill for 20 minutes. I went and took a, a 45 minute red light sauna after that. And, and I did a, re, uh, have a uh, sort of a red light helmet uh, that I wear as well to uh, get a little more red light that penetrates my skull and gives me some red light to my brain. So I, I do it a lot. You know, I'm 68. My plan is to be doing research, changing the world when I'm 88, when I'm 98, when I'm 108. So I, I'm absolutely committed to taking care of myself, uh, thriving, and continuing on my mission of empowering you know, everyone who's listening that there is so much that you can do to support your body's ability to do the biology of life more effectively. I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get-togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order, it's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. Yeah, I actually looked into, because someone else had mentioned something about the newbie device, and the last time I looked into it, and just so you guys know if you're listening, it's basically a neurobioelectric stimulator, and it's just a really innovative approach to the e-stim therapy. Um, but I looked it up, and I think it was like $18,000. Like, it was like no joke. It's very, it's, it's very impressive. It. However, yeah. I want everyone to know uh, there's a couple ways to approach this. Look for, uh, you can uh, contact uh, the Numi uh, company, and they will tell you where there is a device uh, in a physical therapy or chiropractic office. So you have a chance to work with a practitioner who's using the device and see what you think. They also have product uh, boot camps. Uh, I, I know they have boot camps that focus on people with multiple sclerosis. Uh, uh, and you know, my tribe often has really severe disabilities. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking of uh, uh, one young woman who's uh, wheelchair dependent, who can take a, a step or two, who can still transfer to the toilet, to the bed. Uh, and she went down uh, uh, to this device uh, tried this device at their boot camp and saw, and you get sessions, two sessions a day uh, for three days. And she's like, you know, I'm making progress because this helped wake up the connection between the brain, the spinal cord, and the muscles. Um, so she she and her uh, spouse rented a device. She uh, she was a former Division One uh, athlete. Uh, she was a volleyball player. And she really worked at it. Now, two years later, her son is getting married. She's able to walk her son down the aisle at his way. It is so remarkable. It wasn't easy. She had to work really hard. She had to work a couple hours every day with that device. Uh, and then uh, she also was able to do the mother-son dance at his wedding. Now, uh, she would, she's not, at that time, she wasn't able to walk independently yet. But to go from, you know, wheelchair dependence, doing your own transfers, to walking your child down the aisle, it's a big deal. Mm. Yeah, that is. So if someone's listening right now and they want to kind of know 
some of the early signs and symptoms of MS? Like maybe they're starting to so, get some symptoms. What are those? That so you- let's sort of talk about the prodrome that uh, is really the autoimmune prodrome. Uh, and so if you have the, the symptoms I want to go through next, you're uh, at much greater risk in the next five years of developing multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, or any of the autoimmune diseases involving your joints, uh, or the autoimmune disease involving your gut. So we're talking anxiety, depression, uh, pain, headaches, migraines, uh, endometriosis, infertility, uh, and skin stuff. For for MS, we may have difficulty uh, with the sense of balance. You may have um, uh, pain that, you know, is not really well diagnosed. They can, can't really tell. They call it tenosynovitis, maybe carpal tunnel, maybe, and, you know, just arthralgias, myalgias that give you a variety of pain meds. None of the labs are abnormal enough yet to say you have a rheumatologic diagnosis, so it's like, well, we just have to watch and wait. Um, and then perhaps for MS, uh, you can't see quite as well. You go to see your uh, eye doctor, uh, and uh, then they say, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I think we need to get an MRI uh, because this is a vision problem that I can't correct with uh, lenses. I, uh, you may have difficulty with uh, uh, poor coordination, uh, you might be stumbling. Uh, so in my case, I, uh, I'd i had some dim vision, got a big workup. Uh, uh, the MRI was uh, clear at that time. Uh, and then 13 years later, I started stumbling. And it was my stumbling that uh, led to my being seen in neurology. Neurology. What would you say as far as, like, if someone right now is just having major joint pain, maybe having some of these pre things with MS, kind of besides the diet, because that's obviously get that fixed, number one. What would be some other tips that you would give them to kind of be able to mitigate some of these things? So let's say, you know, you don't feel well. For a variety of reasons, muscle pains, uh, headaches, uh, joint pains. You've seen your doctor; they've done all these blood tests, X-rays. Say, well, we, we, you're not enough. There's no clear diagnosis, and you're going home feeling really frustrated. What I want you to do is to focus on what are all the health behaviors that we can improve for you. So, in the more health behaviors that you can ramp up. Uh, and, and the health promoting and away from disease promoting will support better biochemical functioning. So aside from diet, work on sleep, going to bed at, at the same time, preferably before 10 p.m., uh, and getting up at the same time uh, every day, getting outside to get some sunlight uh, on your face and on your skin, having a vitamin D level at the top half of the reference range, Yes, you can take vitamin D supplements, but getting a tan is more effective. And so I like to have people, yes, take their supplements, but also get a tan. Uh, And then I want you to have uh, a really deep conversation with yourself about what is your purpose in life? What is your meaning in life? Um, a, a, A great conversation that can help us I have people imagine smoke rolling out of uh, the windows uh, in their home. Who or what would they run in to save without thinking? Barefoot over broke glass. Uh, And usually it's uh, uh, children, grandchildren, spouse, uh, might be parents, but there's usually uh, uh, one or several people they can rattle off immediately. Occasionally it's their cat or their dog. And occasionally it's nothing. If there's nothing, I'd go to send that person to a psychiatry to help them improve their purpose and meaning in life. Because improving our health behaviors takes work. Uh, adding a new habit takes work. 
removing bad habits takes work. It's uncomfortable. And biologically, you and I, are. my brain will tell me to avoid pain. It's very hard to intentionally do pain. However, if my daughter's life was at risk, no problem. There's no pain that would stop me from protecting her. And so we have to have a reason to do the work. And that's one of the most important uh, steps to take is what is the reason to do the work? What is the reason to endure the pain? Uh, and so what I, if we identify that they'd run into the uh, smoking building to save their, their daughter or their grandson, now I ask, what would you like to do with them that you can't do if your health could moderately improve? And maybe it's not, you'd like to get on the floor and, and play choo-choo with them. Okay. So now I have them visualizing what that idealized future that, of playing choo-choo with their grandchildren. Now I'm willing to work on my sleep because that, that I'm not li link uh, what are their next actions to help them get the play choo choo. Did you guys know that 97% of Americans are deficient in at least one mineral? It's true. You need more than a dozen minerals for your body to function in its best, but with the standard American diet, it's almost impossible. So here's where bean minerals comes in. Guess what? All you have to do, take one little shot of this one, one little shot of this one, and guess what? It looks like this, but it tastes like water. Take one shot and boom, in 30 seconds a day, you're getting an entire thing of minerals instead of an entire cabinet of supplement bottles. So with bean minerals, we make mineral balance simple. That's so good. I want you to talk about one of the things that um, I've heard from people um, that suffer from a lot of joint pain is that a lot of times when they juice fresh fruits and vegetables, because their body is able to digest things better, um, that they they do well. But at the same time, you know, the other side of it is that they're not getting the fiber and, you know, not being able to move those bowels. Yeah. MS can cause major constipation and joint issues. So what is your opinion on that? Do you do a lot of juicing? Do you feel like you need the fiber? Well, the, the, uh, the upside of juicing is you break the cell walls, you have more enzymes, and you can absorb these nutrients uh, more rapidly to the bloodstream. The downside of juicing is you absorb the glucose into the bloodstream more quickly, and you can spike your blood sugar. Uh, if people with MS and, and also with autoimmune joint disease, we are have a higher rate of insulin resistance uh, and uh, uh, metabolic health problems. So you, you want to be sure you know what your blood sugar is, uh, your hemoglobin A1C, uh, your insulin uh, and glucose to, to know are you developing insulin uh, resistance. Now, if you're developing... Go ahead. If, if you're developing insulin resistance, uh, uh, juicing will make that worse. One of the things that you have done that I don't think you did from the time that we talked last, I saw that you now have available for download an app where you can manage your MS symptoms with this app. Talk about that for just a so second. We have, we have a, uh, uh, two apps that people can uh, get into. One is the Walls Diet app. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we also have variations of that in our clinical trials. So you can, uh, and, and I like this a lot, and, you know, uh, once I have that app, I can uh, put in uh, what meals I want. Uh, do I want a bison or a chicken or a fish? Uh, and uh, some great recipes, uh, super fun. And, you know, because people have forgotten how to cook, uh, uh, so uh, that can be very helpful. Now, the other app, the Walls uh, Protocol Mobile Program, um, we have a link where you can uh, get to that. That, uh, um, we went through my book. There are hundreds of discrete actions that you can take. Uh, and we let you identify what are your priorities. 
what are the next actions that you'd like to take to uh, support your healing journey. It is a uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, support. Mm. One of the things that I love about your protocol is that it's super, super easy for someone to remember, especially if they know the paleo diet and then they just go, okay, it's basically the paleo diet and then we're taking a few of these additional things, yeah. the nightshades out and the eggs out. And it's just super easy to do because I think what's happening right now um, you know, with so many people suffering for auto from autoimmune issues, oh, yeah. that there's like, okay, people are like, well, if you're on, you need to be on an autoimmune paleo, or you need to be on low lectin, and then you need to also be on low histamine, and you get to a place where if you start doing too much, right, it's like there's literally nothing. Okay, if I'm <laughs> doing low low lectin low histamine, autoimmune protocol, paleo, you know, kind of combining all these together, then you get to a place where you can get really frustrated because you're like, there's not a dang thing I can eat. You know, yeah. <laughs> and um, that can be a problem. All right. I caution people, uh, I, you know, prefer that you uh, start with the walls protocol. We can start out which level you want to start at. Uh, and if you want to go low lectin and follow um, uh, Dr. Gundry and implement his protocol, uh, you can. There are some similarities there, um, but uh, we do have to watch for the person who develops uh, what's called orthorexia, where like, okay, I'm so rigid, I'm so afraid to eat, I've become very afraid of my food, I'm not eating anything now, and I'm spiraling down with... Uh, 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 severe weight loss, uh, and, uh, uh, severe, uh, uh, I call it a variation of obsessive compulsive disorder. And that can occasionally happen. So, uh, in my clinical practice and in my research practice, we keep a, a lookout for people getting down that orthorexia, uh, uh, spiral. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you, and where they can get your amazing book. Okay. So uh, everyone should follow me on Instagram, Dr. Terry Walls, D-R, and then Terry Walls, T-E-R-R-Y-W-A-H-L-S. Uh, um, I, I'd encourage everyone to go to terrywalls.com, uh, sign up for the emails. So you can hear all of our alerts uh, at uh, terrywalls.com forward slash MS study. Uh, even if, if you have MS, be sure to screen. We'd like to have you in our clinical trials. If you don't have multiple sclerosis, screen anyway. So you can be part of our patient registry because we will be adding uh, additional studies that uh, support people with autoimmune diseases involving their joints. I plan on uh, adding that population probably later in 2024 or early 2025. Again, uh -huh. com. Uh, and we'll see you there. Awesome. Well, Terry, thank you for making such a huge impact on so many lives. You are changing people's lives for their health, for the better every single day. And I personally appreciate all that you're doing so much. Well, much love to you and your tribe. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.